Well, good day YouTube and welcome to another episode of the Bare Naked Albino Rhino Beer Review. And yeah, I'm bare naked. I am bare naked. My junk is airing out right now. Hopefully it doesn't affect my sniff test of the beer. Anyway, anyway, we are reviewing this beer. This beer was brought to me by Average Joe. Thank you very much, Average Joe, for this beer. I'm super excited to try this. This is the third and final beer from the uh, double IPAs he brought me from Ithaca. I do not know the ABV of this. I did not look it up. My computer's over there and turned off. My cell phone is way over there and turned off. Uh, well, it's not turned off. The battery's dead. Um, so, I do not know the ABV of this beer. I do know that he told me they were all above 8% alcohol. Well, it's a double IPA. It has to be above 8% alcohol. Well, above 7, but... He told me they were all above 8, so what the ABV is of this one, I do not know, but I'm done talking about it. This is from the Ithaca Brewing Company, the spirit of the Finger Lakes in New York. This is Ithaca, well sorry, not brewing, the Ithaca Beer Company. This is The Creaker. Been known as The Creaker before I make the bed creak. Okay, I'm sorry. I, uh... I want to think I'm sexually desirable <laughs> to somebody, even if it's not my wife, anybody. It doesn't matter who. Anyway, uh, the <laughs> the Creaker is a double India Pale Ale. 12 fluid ounces from Ithaca, New York. Let us open this up and let... Oh, I slipped, I slipped my credit card opener off the cap. Let's open her up, let's throw that down, let's pour her into my Michelob goblet, and see what we got. Oh, that is uh, a lot paler than I thought it was going to be. Uh, it's okay, though. It's okay. It does fit the color range for a IPA. It's just uh, a lot paler than I wanted. However, it is opaque. It isn't see-through. I'm great with that. It's a nice golden hue. It actually almost matches my wedding ring, which I uh, almost never wear. Um, it's the job I do. I don't wear it because the chemicals can get underneath it. Uh, and for some reason, I get more tips when I hit on the old ladies that I'm not wearing a wedding ring. Anyway, uh, beautiful, beautiful color. I'm gonna smell it now. It, does, it is visually appealing, I just like to make fun of the fact that it's so gold. It is a very pale, pale ale. That's okay, though. Mmm. 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 Okay. So, after testing my pit, I can say it does sort of smell like human B.O. At least albino B.O. However, with that scent comes a nice bit of citrus. You're getting you're getting some grapefruit. You're getting some lemon. You're getting a little touch of apricot. You're getting a touch of passion fruit. Uh, there is a big exploding amount of mango in there, which is probably why it smells like uh, body odor. I always find like uh, absolute mango. Absolute mango I find smells just like body odor. A little bit of pine, a little bit of a floral scent, a perfumey scent. And uh, that's about it. Out of the glass, you're not getting the perfumey scent. You're getting everything else but the perfume. Out of the bottle, you get that nice perfume scent. Out of the glass, you don't. But that's okay. That's perfectly acceptable. There's nothing wrong with that. Let us try it. Let, let us see how we feel about this. Cheers, boys and girls. Let us try this beautiful looking beer.
Okay. For me, the weakest of the three double IPAs he brought me. The weakest of the three. There was the, uh... The, um... What was it? It was something Zilla. Hopzilla? No, um... I, I don't even remember. Uh... But there was a red pale ale. A double red pale ale. A red imperial ale. Really, really good. The dark vine black IPA. Really, really good. This regular imperial IPA? Good. It is good. But not really, really good for me. Could be for you. Not for me. I don't even fully know what to say about this beer, to tell you the truth. Um, will it get you drunk? Yes. Will you know it's getting you drunk? No, there's no alcohol burn whatsoever on this beer, which makes it a, quoting my good friend Guy, very, very dangerous beer. Uh, it is a very, very dangerous beer. Uh, is it a double IPA that will destroy your palate? Uh, after four or five, probably. But two or three, which is enough to get most people drunk at uh, somewhere in the 8 to 10% alcohol range? Uh, no. No, it won't destroy your palate with... Uh, one to three of them. Um, if you're not a hophead, could you drink it? Probably. If you're a hophead, could you drink it? Yeah, I don't know if a hophead would fully enjoy it. Because I am a malt maniac and a yeast beast. And I am a hophead if it's the right hops. Uh, this is not the right hops for me to be a hophead. But it is enjoyable. So if I'm enjoying it, I don't know if a full on hophead would enjoy it or not. medium body it does fill your mouth uh, the hop profile is fairly inapparent um, he brought this to me a little over a month ago so it's probably a two month old beer uh, at two months old yes yeah, some hop profile can start mm, fading but the way the hops are done if that really started fading it should just get really bitter uh, with the hops I smelt, it should just get really bitter in my mouth, and it's not. It's actually a very, very welcoming bitterness. It hits the sides of your tongue and the back of your tongue, and it just emanates out nicely. Uh, it is a beautiful, beautiful tasting beer, and I'm excited to have been able to try it. Uh, do I love it? No. Would I buy it again? Yeah. I would actually buy that 12 pack again. I don't know if there was an, a fourth beer in it or if it was just these three and you got uh, four of each, but it is very worthwhile buying. Um, it was, uh, it's, it's just so, so nice. Nice is the best way to put it. It is a nice refreshing double IPA. But it's not in your face, and it doesn't give you as many flavors as I thought it was going to give me. I smelt passion fruit, I smelt mango, I smelt lemon, I smelt apricot, I smelt grapefruit. I was expecting to get all those. I smelt, uh, I, I smelt perfume. Uh, I didn't really get any of them. I just got a, a caffeine pill bitterness is really the best way to put it. It's just, the, just bitter. Um... Nice sweetness on the forefront, a nice malty sweetness on the forefront. Fades to almost a blood orange sweetness, almost a blood orange sweetness, which then turns into the bitterness. The bitterness starts at the very bottom of your throat, really it starts below your Adam's apple, which is weird. I mean, it starts about two inches below your Adam's apple and comes up but stops right at the back of your throat. Your tongue doesn't get hit with bitterness. It's weird. It's weird and enjoyable at the same time, and I think that's the reason why I can enjoy this. It's a Moorish beer. It's refreshing. It's a hot day beer, really, because it doesn't dry out your palate. It's just refreshing and makes you want more. You can't ask for anything else other than what you're getting in this, uh, other than more hop presence. Uh, again, it could be an age thing, but it shouldn't be an age thing. Ooh, I tooted. Again, no alcohol burn at all. I have to give this a uh, 7.75 out of 10. 
Um, I would buy it again. It's just the weakest of the three for me. Taste-wise, it's the weakest of the three. Uh, but is it a bad beer? Not at all. If you love this beer, you love this beer. I can see why people would love this beer. I don't love it. That's okay. We're all different. We all accept that. Um, maybe it's the class I'm drinking. Maybe I should have used my dogfish head anal bead class. It's a good beer. It really is. It deserves to be consumed. These three, the Dark Vine, the, um... Whatever Zilla, I don't even remember, and uh, the Creaker. All three of them deserve to be year-round releases by this brewery. They actually should be year-round releases, especially in the U.S. where IPA is king. Um, where Pale Ale is king, these should be full-on releases. And none of them tasted of the alcohol they had in them. They're all very dangerous beers. They're all very scary beers because they will get you drunk fast. Uh, and they don't taste bad. They taste so good that even a moderate hophead, even a, uh, a guy that's like a level 2 out of 5 on craft beer, he could get behind them and enjoy them. So if anyone can really get behind them and enjoy them, it makes them even more dangerous and more versatile and more needed to be year-round. Ithaca Brewing Company, Ithaca Beer Company, if you ever watch this, which I know you won't, I mean, I'm the nobody, I'm not Beer Geek Nation, I'm not Chads, I'm not, uh, I'm not any of those guys, I'm not even Hoogly, I love you, Lee, but I'm just saying, I'm not even you, uh, if you watch this, make all three of these a year-round release, if they're year-round releases, I'll buy it every time I go to the States, I don't go as much now that Joe comes up here, but I go to the states and I, I'm always looking for beer to buy. I would buy, I would buy 12 beers to review and a 12 pack of this almost every time I crossed, just to enjoy these, uh, these three beers. And if they're not in a mix pack, I'd buy two or three of each of them, just to bring back here and enjoy. Uh, they're great beers. They're beers that everybody should try. And thank you, YouTube, for watching. Thank you for uh, putting up with me for all these years. And bye bye. I got a chugger. Chuggernut. Chuggernut. That went out my nostril. <laughs> the alcohol burns there when it goes in your nasal cavity. <laughs> oh god. In your nasal cavity, there's there's an alcohol burn. Oh my god, what? Oh, thank you, YouTube.